Okay, in this video, we're gonna take a look at uh, creating a hitbox, creating a coin object, creating some score, and working with variables. So I'm gonna go to gdevelop, click try it online. And of course, as I always say, if you have downloaded it, I'd encourage you to use your downloaded version. But for those people that can't download and install it, let's just go to try it online. So I need to, um, A little advertisement always pops up, which is A-OK -okay with me. Um, I'm going to go and open up my project. So I click Open Project, open it for my Google Drive. And where I left off last time was um, on number four, I believe, number three. Um, and you'll see here, I number mine each time. And, and that's not something that you have to do. It's just something I do so I can kind of go back when I test it and uh, go back to the last day's work and so forth. So anyhow, I'm going to open up from Google Drive and you'll see here's my level. Another thing I just want to mention is I'm just showing you the basics. I'm hoping that you're going to have a much larger uh, set of platforms and a real adventure that you're going to start working on uh, making up here. So. First things first, uh, I'm going to talk about the hitbox. So let me um, go to the player object and I'm going to select the object and go edit object. And in here, um, this is my player and I've got uh, animation for stopped and moving and jumped and so forth. And at the very bottom, it tells me that I can um, edit the hitbox. And so if I want to edit the hitbox, I just click here where it says edit the hitbox. And what the hitbox is, is where a collision is going to happen. So although it displays the lovely sprite and animation sprite, um, what happens is sometimes the player, actually, let me even demonstrate that before I uh, go to edit the hitbox, um, is what happens is when the player can be on the edge, he appears to be floating. And, and that's Partly okay if he's got a toe, that's okay. But if it's just his head that's uh, there, it can be a bit of a problem. And so, for example, if I jump up here, you can see I can, uh, that's okay. But see right here, I'm sort of at the very edge of the screen and it's still uh, kind, of, uh, kind of right there. I'm floating in space. So I don't want that. And the other thing um, is it also made the ladder a little bit trickier with, um, it sometimes was hard to go down. Now, now for some reason, it seems super easy. Um, but uh, sometimes it can be kind of hard to go down. And if I had an enemy that was chasing me and I was like, oh, oh trying to get out of it, um, I don't want to be stuck here and, and lose because, oh, it's not quite, you know, perfectly lined up with the ladder where it should be to go down. So to make that uh, just a little bit better, we're going to edit what is called the hitbox. And so we go edit object. And we scroll to the very bottom where it says edit the hitboxes. And that, that will edit all of the hitboxes. So I go edit hitbox. You can see I can select which frame, uh, sorry, which animation uh, to do. Um, and uh, so I can select it. Um, but what I want to do is I want to um, use a custom collision mask. So down here at the bottom, you'll see... Uh, it says a custom collision mask, and that's why what I want to do. So this is um, what I'm going to do here. Okay, so I'm going to use a custom mask, and let's uh, get started with that. So I go here, and um, it draws the box. And if I click the plus sign, that means to add something. So I'm going to click on that. And you see, it says, oh, let's, how about a quadrilateral? Now, this one is a little bit small. I, of course, don't want the hitbox to be that small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it down here. Um, and I'm going to make the, the hitbox uh, way at the bottom here. And, oops, it's hard to get down to the bottom sometimes. It's a little sticky. Uh, and down at the bottom here. So this is going to be... Uh, my hitbox, and I'll play around with different, uh, and I guess I should make the top 
But part of his head is fine because I don't want that necessarily to be the hitbox, especially for the vertical. So there we go. And now that is my hitbox. Okay, and you'll see if I play the game, uh, it won't float so much. It'll still be able to have his toe just touching, but uh, if his toe is even off, then he will drop and his head could actually go through these solid objects. Great, the next thing I wanna do, I'm just gonna make a new object here and I'm gonna put some coins. Part of the fun of the game is collecting coins. We need to have some sort of thing to do. And uh, so we're gonna make some coins. So just like we did before, I'm gonna get a Sprite. Uh, I'm gonna call the Sprite coins. And I'm gonna add an animation. And because I'm using the online version, I've got to uh, just use the built-in uh, graphics. I can't use any that I upload from Piscal just yet. Okay, so there you go. And I'm going to edit the hitbox. You'll see the hitbox was already pretty darn good. But again, just to review how I do it, I can uh, use custom, click the plus, and I can size to uh, make it a little tinier. So I really have to hit it, uh, this coin. And this will make it so um, I've actually got to really climb up or get close to the coin to collect it. So that looks good. I'll press close and I'll press apply. Now I have a coin. I can drag the coin. I'm going to put a couple coins. I'll put one maybe right. Oops, not on there. Down a little. Uh, one coin there I'm going to collect and I'll make another coin up here uh, on above the ladder that I'm going to collect. Terrific. So now I can uh, go and, and do that. So um, to collect the coins, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, create a new, um, let's go to our events. I need to uh, create something uh, so that when I collect a coin, the coin ends up uh, disappearing. So what I'm going to do here is, uh, by the way, um, to put them in groups, you'll see all the codes are in there for uh, uh, movement and all the codes are in there for um, uh, camera. So again, if I um, indent a bit, you'll see it groups that, this action here with the camera and uh, I can minimize it and there you go. So let's make another, um, group and what i'm going to call uh for this uh group oops wrong one click here uh the big plus and i go group and this group here what i want to call it is uh score so now any act events and actions for the score i can put in here and collecting a coin uh would be part of that score so let's add a um an item to score here. So we can click plus, but I've already done that. And what I wanna do here is I'm gonna add a condition and the condition is a collision. So a collision between the player and the coin. And so if the player hits a co coin um, and the default is no, uh, ignore objects that are touching each other, but not overlapping. Um, and that's what we want. We're going to actually have to touch um, the coin to get it. So we'll leave it at, a, at no, and I'll press OK. So now if I collide with the coin, what I want the coin to do is disappear. So um, uh, that would be delete. So I want to delete an object. And the object I'm going to delete is the coin that I just collected. Great. There's something else I want to put in here is I want to put some score. So let's go back to our game and think about putting score. So if I want to put some score on here, which is the number of coins I've collected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to objects and I'm going to create a new object, which is going to be a text object. And Let's call this score. And I'm going to make it size 50. So the font size 50, so it's nice and big and we can see it. Okay. And so now I'll drag some score on here. 
and I'm going to show you the problem. I'm going to collect some coins and I'm going to show you uh, two problems here. So here's, here's my text. I'll just leave it saying text for now. Um, and when I press play, what you're going to see, uh, we'll demonstrate the hit boxes and you should see the coin will be collected. And ideally, the text will tell us how many coins that we have collected. So as I run around here, you'll see I collect the coin. But the problem is as I go, um, the text, the coins would be disappeared. I want to make it like a heads up display. So how am I going to do that? So what I want to do here is uh, to make it a heads up display, we're going to do something called layers. So right now I've got this layer here, which is the display, the, uh, the, the game layer. I want to make another layer and to make another layer, I'm going to call that the, uh, I could call it the heads up display HUD. And maybe I will do that. I'll call it the HUD uh, perhaps. And so I click over here to open the layers editor at the top right. And uh, if you didn't see that, I clicked uh, just right up here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I want to add a layer. So I've got uh, my base layer. That is my game. But I want to add another layer. And this layer I'm going to call my uh uh heads up display or just i might call it display um so let's call it display great so i'm going to click add a layer so i click here where it said add a layer and it calls it layer i'm going to call it uh display and now i've got a layer for display So I've got display layer and base layer. Okay, so how does it work? Well, what it will do is this is my display and I just want it to um, always be in the same place on the display. And so what I can do is uh, let me click on this uh, text, I'll delete it and I'm gonna add it in again. And then if I click on it once to select it, it will tell me uh, the layer right down here. So it tells me that it's put it on the base layer and the base layer has movement. The base layer is moving and that's why it didn't uh, work. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, click here where it says base layer and I'm gonna say, I want it to be on the display, great. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is um, show you how to make a variable. So to make a variable, what we're gonna do is we'll go up to the top uh, here where we go to save. And if we click on the game settings, there is something called a global variable. And so a global variable is useful because we can use it uh, on this screen, on another screen, uh, any of the different uh, places in our game. And so uh, we'll create a global variable. And again, we click the plus to add, and I'm going to call the variable number of coins. And one thing to note um, in programming, we don't use uh, spaces. So when I make a variable, I call it uh, capital N, capital O, capital C. So every different word is uh, capitalized because I don't put a space in. So number of coins. I'll put a little check mark. Yep, and then say apply that. Okay, so now I've got an active global variable. So what I wanna do next is I'm gonna go back to my um, game here. And in my game events, what I wanna do is every time I collect a coin, I want to change the text to display that variable. So to do that, I'm gonna go and take a look at the action and the first thing i need to do is well when the player collides with coins i want to increment the coin so i need to add something here so my variable number of coins is bigger so i'm going to click on variable and global variable and i'm going to say the value of the global variable and 
the global variable displays here, number of coins. There's only one variable. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a value of one to it. So now it's going to be one bigger. So number of coins was zero. When I collide, it'll be one. And then if I collide again, it'll be two and so forth. So this is going to add a value of one to the number of coins. So I press OK. And you'll see here collision with a coin. We delete the coin and we add the number of coins to be one bigger. Great. Something else I want to do here, and I want to do this all the time. So I'm just going to go and say add a new empty event is I want to update my score constantly um, to being the number of coins. Just because I change the value of the variable doesn't mean the variable is going to be displayed anywhere. And so what I want to do is I want to uh, display the number of coins that I currently have. So I'm going to add an action and it's going to be under the uh, text object and it's going to be modify the text that we see. So I'm going to modify the text we see and the object text, I've only got my score object. So I'm going to select score and I want to set the text to be something. Well, what is it going to be? It's going to be, um, it's going to say uh, coins, um, but this is just some text that it's going to display. So I put it in quotation marks. So I want it to display coins. And then I put the plus sign. I also want to add to it a variable. And... Um, I'm going to say global variable and which global variable the variable was called number of coins. So I have to type it in exactly as it is. Okay. So it's going to display the letters C O I N S colon. And then it's also going to display the global variable uh, to string. And inside of it, I put the actual global variable, which is, number of coins. Okay, so let's test this out. And I think that is it for today. We've done a lot of things. We've looked at doing hit boxes. We've looked at displaying the score. We've looked at uh, creating a coin that disappears when we uh, hit it. Uh, we've created a variable and we've uh, modified updating the text uh, in, in here. And so now instead of saying text, it says coins. You'll see as I move, our heads up display keeps coins active. And when I click a coin, now it changes to one. And if I click up here, I have two. Great. So there you have it. And uh, we'll carry on from there uh, next day.